So the Baltimore Ravens just reunited with a defensive player that could have a big impact on the defense in 2024. We also got some updates on the offensive line. We got some mock draft updates, some rule changes in the NFL, and much more Baltimore Ravens news. So welcome in to another episode of Ravens Reports. It's your guy, Noah, here with For the Flock, as always, bringing you guys our top five news reports and storylines coming out of our Baltimore Ravens today. Let's dive right in. At number one, the Ravens have reunited with the linebacker Chris Board. If you don't remember who Chris Board is, let me get you up to date real quick and tell you why he could have an impact. So he came into the Baltimore Ravens as a 2018 undrafted free agent. He made the roster. He played 25 and 30 percent of the snaps in 2020 and 2021. He had two and a half sacks, 31 tackles in 2020, then logged 41 tackles the following year. So Chris Board, he then went and signed with the Detroit Lions in free agency and then spent last season with the New England Patriots, man. And I know the excitement and the writing is on the wall for Trenton Simpson to come in and start next to Roquan Smith. But let me just tell you, man, I don't think the Ravens are just going to give him the job. Trenton Simpson's going to have to go out and earn that job, take that job from the other veterans in the room. Don't forget the Ravens just re-signed Malik Harrison, who has played good football, who can play inside and outside linebacker. And I guarantee you, Malik Harrison, Josh Ross, and Chris Board now are all going to be fighting tooth and nail for a starting spot on this defense. And Trenton Simpson, to keep those guys on the bench uh, or keep them in special teams roles or situational roles, is going to have to go out and earn that spot. But I'm excited about what Trenton Simpson can do. You know, he flashed like crazy late in the season when he started against the Pittsburgh Steelers, flying all over the place, making tackles. I remember seeing him in training camp in person last year and just thinking, man, that dude is built. I remember just thinking, man, this guy has like the prototypical linebacker build. I mean, just ripped up, head to toe, 6'3", tall, stocky, um, and he moves really well. I just remember thinking, man, that guy looks like he belongs out there as a rookie. But I do like how the Ravens are shoring up some of the, the weaker spots on their team before the draft and adding some depth, right? You go out and you sign Arthur Millette, who provides some insurance and some, some depth, right? Some starting caliber play, you know, even if he doesn't start all throughout the year. Same thing with Chris Board, Malik Harrison, you know, if Trenton Simpson doesn't perform you know, as we expect, or, you know, injuries happen here or there, you want to have solid depth. And that's what exactly what the Ravens are doing. Exactly why the Ravens this last year were able to survive and storm so many injuries at different positions. The reason why, you know, you, you were still surviving at the running back position whenever J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and Keaton Mitchell were all dealing with injury. And then Justice Hill was your RB1 for a while, holding it down, making plays. So that's exactly what the Ravens do. They like to have a deep roster and have plenty of depth because we know in the NFL, it's not a matter of if a player gets injured, but when they get injured. At number two, PFF posts this little graphic here. We've been talking about these guys who, would, right now, if the season were to start today, what the offensive line would look like. From left to right, left tackle Ronnie Stanley. Left guard would be Andrew Voorhees, presumably. Center stays the same. Stud, uh, Pro Bowl caliber player, Tyler Linderbaum. Right guard, we assume Ben Cleveland, who filled in some snaps for Kevin Zeitler whenever he was banged up this year. And then right tackle, Daniel Falele, Patrick McCarry. So obviously you want to strengthen up that guard position, have some more depth, and you also want to have some more depth and strengthen up the offensive tackle position as well. And then here's where it gets fun as well. Mel Kuyper Jr., who's been covering the draft for years at uh, the highest of levels, he says that Andrew Voorhees, he tells Ryan Mink, is like the Ravens, having an extra second or third round pick this year. He's a guy that I think is a plug and play starter at guard this year. We know he tore the ACL at the pro day. He was healthy a few months ago, you know, getting stronger. And he's going to have a full off season of OTAs, mini camps, uh, training camp, 
to go out there and take a starting guard position. And that's pretty high praise for Mel Kuyper to say it's like having an extra second or third round pick because that was the range that Andrew Voorhees was being looked at before the injury. You know, second, third, fourth round range, you know, it depended on how high of a grade you had on him. But that uh, that range was definitely in conversation last year before he tore his ACL. I'm excited about Andrew Voorhees, but that doesn't stop me from going out and drafting a guard or a tackle prospect early in this year's draft class. In fact, I want to I want the Ravens to grab two offensive linemen within their first uh, four rounds, you know, because they have two fourth round picks. So within their first five picks, I'd like to see the Ravens double dip at the offensive line position because you got to build a wall, keep Lamar Jackson clean and be able to run the football for guys like Derrick Henry, who you just invested, you know, $16 million in. At number four, while we're on the draft, let's look at some recent mock drafts that analysts all throughout the NFL, uh, all types of organizations have been mocking to the Baltimore Ravens, some different players. So this one caught my eye here because anytime I see something from Daniel Jeremiah, you know, the former Baltimore Ravens scout who was in the organization with Eric DaCosta and Ozzie Newsome and knows the type of guys they like and the type of players that they look for. Anytime he says a guy, a lot of times he gets it right. But I, I, I listen. I definitely keep a keen eye and ear to what Daniel Jeremiah has to say or write. So he says Baltimore has a knack for watching tough, smart, and versatile players fall into his lap. We see it happening once again with DeGene, who comes on from a noted Ravens factory at the University of Iowa, the alma mater of current Raven Tyler Linderbaum and Geno Stone, Marshall Yanda. So, Cooper DeGene, I see some mock draft simulators and some big boards that have him as a top 15 player. A lot of them top 20, and then some of them top 30, top 40. But the consensus is... He's a top 40 player in this draft. So if you were to happen to fall to pick number 30, I would not be mad at the Ravens getting this tier of player. This guy, when I talk about instincts for the football, um, man, he has some instincts. He, he's one of those corners who consistently gets his head around. He's a corner that's also really physical and will just light you up, man. If you try to run the football to his side of the football field, he will run down into the box and run support and light whoever it is up uh, without regard for his own body. Cooper DeGene, I love him as a football player. So, now, some people are saying that he's a safety prospect, but let's just be 100% transparent and real here. I think a lot of people are saying that because you don't see a lot of Caucasian corners. That's just the reality of the situation. But Cooper DeGene can play cornerback, outside cornerback, at a very, very high level. He's been playing outside corner for his entire career at Iowa. Yeah, they'll throw him in at the nickel or maybe throw him into a safety spot here and there, but almost every DB does that here and there in different packages. So Cooper DeGene is 100% an outside corner who can cover team's number one wide receiver, and I don't say that lightly. Another guy I really like as well that could be in the, in the cards here in the first round, I'm not saying the Ravens should go corner, but don't rule it out if an elite prospect falls to the Ravens who they fall in love with. The Alabama boy... Cornerback Kool Aid McKinnistry uh, just had his pro day today. I believe he ran like a four four seven, despite having like a Jones fracture in his foot, which he's going to get taken care of and should be good to go for the season. But and I think he's being overshadowed a little bit by his teammate Terry and Arnold, who um, a lot of teams are falling in love with as well. Some other guys include wide receiver Keon Coleman. We got wide receiver Lad McConkey. We got uh, offensive lineman Graham Barton. Uh, we got the offensive tackles that we've – the last two guys that I mocked is are, are Marius Mims and Tyler Guyton. Those were the two guys that I had in the first round for my mock drafts, and those are guys that are consistently coming up in the other mock drafts as well for the Baltimore Ravens at pick number 30. At number five, the Ravens could be subject to this rule just like every other team in the NFL if this gets approved. So the new rule that was proposed is banning the hip drop tackle. Man, uh, you know, for a Ravens fan, we, we're familiar with that hip drop tackle because of uh, big number 89, right, who, you know, was not healthy going into the playoffs because of this type of tackle. Now, am I saying that I think it should be banned? No, man, I think it's football. And a lot of times we try to put all kinds of different rules in place to 
fix injuries and then it can end up causing other injuries in the process. And I think sometimes when you try to fabricate uh, what can be natural movements on the football field, it can cause some awkward situations. And I don't know, man. I, I'm not a huge fan of banning the hip drop tackle. I understand why. But players get hurt on all kinds of tackles, not just the hip drop tackle. But I do understand where the league is coming from on this. If you remember Logan Wilson executing that hip drop tackle on Mark Andrews. And a lot of times the way it happens is the player who's getting tackled has their ankle fall behind their glutes and their hamstrings. And then the weight of the other player gets pinned and kind of um, collapses that ankle. That's exactly what happened with Mark Andrews. And something that the NFL is looking into, proposing it as a rule change. We'll see if it gets approved or not. All right, guys. So if you enjoyed today's episode of Ravens Reports, if you got any value out of today's content, man, I'd really appreciate it if you leave the video a like. It really helps out the channel. And if you could hit that subscribe button, we're getting really close to 40,000 subscribers. So go ahead and help us get there so I can keep you up to date on all of your Baltimore Ravens news content updates, man. I love you guys. appreciate you guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Hey, when he wasn't looking, he ran me over.